Good morning and welcome to Paul T Reviews. And in this video, I'm going to do a review of the Stone Chew Mini Chainsaw. I'm not getting paid for this review, but I do get to keep the chainsaw. So let's see what's in the hard case. So I haven't seen in here before, I haven't opened it. So this is all new to me. So this is exactly what is in the box. A warranty card here, instruction manual. Have a look at those later. Oh, we've even got a glove, two gloves. I would actually recommend using a tougher gloves than this. These actually might be tough, I'm not quite sure, but I prefer Kevlar gloves. But that's a nice touch to have gloves included. Got a little wire brush. The charging cable, charging plug. And this is a long six inch, probably, blade for holding the chain. We'll have a look at that later. We've got a chain here. In fact, we've got two chains, three chains. We've got an eight inch chain there, a spare eight inch chain, and a six inch chain. And indeed, there's a six inch chain already attached. Safety goggles, which I definitely recommend. There we are, wrap round safety goggles, excellent. Uh, we've got a battery here, we've got two batteries. So that's a charger and two batteries. And then here we have the chainsaw itself. Yeah, feels nice and balanced. It'll be more balanced when the battery is attached to it. There we are. I don't know whether the battery is Mm, it's nice and it's nice and secure. I don't know whether these are charged up, so I'll go and charge these now. In the meantime, let's have a look at this. Always looking at it without the battery in, of course. Now, what we haven't got, we haven't got any oil. So we'll have a look at the instructions and see what the oil situation is. So it looks like I'm gonna to have to get some oil for this. We've got the guard here, sort of rather short. So we have a six inch blade and an eight inch blade. Let's see uh, how it's set up. Generally speaking, you need a little bit of play in this and that seems about right to me. They normally say about three millimeters and I'll double check in the manual there. They're fairly straightforward, these chainsaws. There's just a blade, a cover, you take it off. I'm not going to do that at the moment because I'm going to use this first. I'm going to demonstrate what it's like in the garden and then we'll release this and have a look at the chains. Yeah, very good. I like this. It's a nice solid uh, carry case. Yeah, very good. Oh, well, that's how it goes. In there like that.
I've just been outside, we've used the chainsaw, and indeed it performed really well. I didn't press hard with the blade, I let the chainsaw do the work, and the cuts, as you saw, were very clean. So let's now have a look at changing the chain and see the process of actually removing the chain and the blade and putting it back together again. I'll use my glasses for this. First of all, we have the unlocking device here. We need to take this top part off here first. So let's just turn this round here. Then once this is unlocked, we can just rotate this. There we are. So all we've done is taken this top plastic piece off this uh, spigot here, off this screw here. And now here we have the blade, obviously the chain round it. So let's just take that off. There we are, and a good idea is when you take a chain off, just see which way round it goes so you're very confident when you put it back. It's actually straightforward, but there we are. The chain has come off like that, so there it is. I'll just put that there for the moment. Of course, I've just been out in the garden and I've done some sawing, so there was quite a lot of debris in the machine. And once you open it up here, you can easily clean it. And what I use is a toothbrush. This is the six inch mounting plate, the six inch chain, and then the protective top. Let's just put it back together again. So we, obviously it's this way up. And we just place it over there like that. And let's put the chain on. In actual fact, it's easy to see which way the chain goes. These parts here that stick out, this, they are simply to go in the groove here and run along there. So that's easy enough to know that it's that way round. And these are the blades here. And the blades go this way round. So the blade here points that way. You can actually see in the manual because they do a good diagram. And let's see how easy it is to put the chain back on. Oh, and first of all, we've just got the little cog wheel here and it just goes round the cog wheel. There we are. It's round the cog wheel and now we just want to place the chain in the groove Let's try it this way. So we've got the chain, just placing it in the groove there. Pull it forward so that it can now go um, inside the cogwheel. And now it's just a case of putting all the little bits of metal of the chain here into the groove on the blade. There we are. Yeah, done it. There we are. So that's now done. I'm pulling the blade forward a little bit just to put some tension here so it doesn't come off the blade or off the, the cog wheel here. And now it's a case of aligning this washer over this. There we are. And then screw it down. I'm just keeping a little bit of pressure on here to make sure none of these flick off. And this top part actually goes as a guiding part in here, so it goes down in there. Yeah, we're fully down now. I'll just tighten it up as much as I can. 
there we are, that's pretty tight, that's aligned. And now we've got the top part here. I'm gonna screw this down a little way. And now we want to find out if the tension on the chain is good. And they say that if you can lift a little bit out here like that, now that seems about right to me. If it isn't, you screw this down further to make it a little tighter. You don't want this to be too loose because you don't want it to flick out of the blade. There we are. And now I want to test that it runs around smoothly. And to do that, I'm going to use a Kevlar glove. Now I do have the other glove here, the glove that came with the kit. I wondered whether it was some special material, but in fact it isn't. Um, I'll just show you. So I used it for half an hour yesterday and it's already gone through my thumb. So really there is no protection with these gloves at all. It's nice that it's there, but it doesn't actually give protection. So I would recommend a Kevlar glove. I've got a link in the description below to Kevlar gloves. Surprise, surprise. An affiliate link at that. And I appreciate it when anyone uses my affiliate links as I get or may get a very small commission. And it helps the channel and I appreciate that. This Kevlar glove is protection against knives, any blades. I want to manually move the chain round the blade to see that everything is running smoothly. And of course you do need a proper glove for this. There we are. Perfect. And you know what I've been doing? Look at this. I've done all that with the battery in. Now that is a big, big no-no. Don't do anything with the battery in. So I've made a mistake there. The battery needs to come off. I just tested it before I started filming and forgot to take the battery out. And all that we need now is a little bit of oil. No oil came with this kit, which surprises me a little bit. And indeed, there's no mention of oil in the manual. So the manufacturers don't think oil is that important, but I think it probably is. So I will get some oil and just put it round the blade and the chain here, just to ease the friction and make everything move much more smoothly. Now then, now that I've put this on, I've tested that it runs freely. The protective cover here is symmetrical. It's bang in the middle, so it isn't touched by the chain. Let's now put the battery back in. And I'll show you how you start this chainsaw. You press the trigger twice and the chainsaw starts. If you press it once, nothing happens. If you press it twice in quick succession, the chain goes round. And when you release the trigger, it stops. And in actual fact, that is quite handy for left-handers because I can use this as a left-hander very easily. If you want the chain to carry on going round without having to continually press the trigger, you can use this button here like this. And to stop it, you press the trigger again. I don't really recommend using it like that because it means if you dropped it in any way, the chain would continue to go round. So just use the trigger and hold the trigger. I wouldn't lock the motor on with this so it's running all the time regardless of whether the trigger is pulled or not. No, I will just use the trigger twice in succession. Easy. 
even though this is electric, it's actually quite a powerful little saw, which is great, but it does have to be respected. It is a power tool. And I like it and I will use it. And I feel that it's a useful tool to have around the garden. And since I've been sent this chainsaw and I've asked around my friends, I found that a lot of people and elderly people do have it and do like these mini chainsaws. So from that point of view and from my own experience right now of using it, I would recommend a mini chainsaw. And there's nothing wrong with this one. The whole kit, including the carry case, at the moment is available in Britain at £125. I'll put a link in the description below to the chainsaw should you wish to find out more or buy one. And I'll see you next time in Paul T Reviews. Bye!